The second type of assets that I'd like to think about are what we refer to as property plant equipment. This is a little bit more complex than accounting for inventories because when it comes to property plant equipment we'll see that the accounting requirements aren't addressed in a single accounting standard, they're actually addressed in multiple accounting standards. And that makes it a little bit more complicated to read the accounting standards and to appreciate the accounting practices applied to property plant and equipment. Just as with inventory, whenever we start to think about how an asset might be accounted for, we need to consider whether it is more or less likely to be accounted for on an historic cost basis or a current value or fair value basis. Once again, we can think about what is the nature of the asset and how is the asset used in the business model. We can think about the duration over which the asset is held. And we can think about whether the value of the asset is likely to change materially. In relation to property plant equipment, it's a little bit problematic because we know that the asset is held for use but not for gain. We know that it might be held for long periods of time. And there may or may not be material changes in value. And that's going to make determination of whether it's historic cost or current value a little bit problematic. But if we think about the practicality, if we are going to use a current value or a fair value approach, how would you go about determining current value? Let's be perfectly honest, there's not a, an active market in many assets that firms hold as property plant equipment. So practically speaking, it's probably going to say that hmm, property plant equipment is more likely to be accounted for on an historic cost basis. What we need to do is to see how this manifests in the accounting standards. The first thing we need to consider is what is property plant equipment, and that's addressed in IAS 16 AASB 116. If we look at paragraph 6, it tells us that property plant equipment is tangible, you can care, and it's something which is held for use in the production or supply of goods or services. Property plant equipment is going to be held for more than one period, and so that makes the issue of recognising costs an issue. There are some things that are excluded from the application of the standard, and it may be that biological assets are excluded, although I say maybe. We'll come back to that at a later date. In terms of if it is going to be an historic cost approach to accounting for property plant equipment, then in an accounting standard, at some point in time, it is going to determine what costs can be carried forward. And this is addressed in IS 16 AASB 116, and it says that when it comes to property plant equipment, we're going to initially recognise property plant equipment at cost. And the cost of property plant equipment include the cost of purchase, and other costs in bringing the inventory to its location and condition. Now, if that sounds a little bit familiar to you, that's good, because it's a, that's exactly the same way in which we created a class of costs in relation to inventory. And I often think that in terms of understanding what are the costs of PPE, it's sometimes quite useful to think about, well, how is this an extension or a continuation of how we considered the costs of inventory. Just to carry on that line of thinking, what we can see here is a journal entry that an airline might recognise when it was purchasing an aircraft. You buy engines, an airframe, you paint it, you get some certification for it and you pay some legal fees. These are all ostensibly part of the cost of an aircraft which might be purchased by an airline. Interest may also be able to be carried forward in certain circumstances. So for example, if you're constructing an asset yourself, interest costs incurred during the construction phase might be considered part of the cost of the asset. And this is addressed in IAS 23, AASB 123. Probably the point to make here is that this is very much a supplement 
to what we see in 116 for how it defines the costs of property, plant and equipment. And what you'll see here in paragraph 8 is that it allows for the capitalization of borrowing costs which are directly attributable to the acquisition of a qualifying asset. And that might be property, plant, equipment. So what this is doing is, is it, it's expanding the type of costs that might be carried forward as property, plant and equipment. Not so much a standalone standard, but very much a support act for how we define the costs that can be carried forward for property, plant and equipment. So that's the first aspect of accounting for property, plant and equipment on an historic cost basis ticked off. The second issue which has to be addressed whenever you have an historic cost basis for accounting for an asset is are there any limits on the costs to be carried forward. This isn't addressed in, uh, in IS 16 to ASB 116. It's actually addressed in another accounting standard, IS 36 to ASB 136, and that is impairment of assets. To keep things simple, I'm going to place an emphasis here on individual assets and I'll talk about aggregate assets, cash generating units, when I talk about accounting for intangible assets. It seems a more natural divide and it breaks down the consideration of impairment into more manageable chunks. The impairment process starts off by determining whether there are indicators of impairment Indicators which suggest that the value, the book value of assets is greater than the fair value or the, cat or the recoverable amount of the assets. So the standard says that if there are indicators of impairment, then you have to determine the recoverable amount. And the recoverable amount is the higher of fair value, less costs of disposal, and fair value is determined in accordance with IF, IFRS 13, ASB 13 or value and use, which is defined in paragraphs 30 to 57. The key issue is that because it says the higher of, it may be that you can't determine fair value and use and simply you have to calculate value and use. And the fact that you can't ca calculate fair value, well, that's not problematic in any way. So you have to work out the recoverable amount. And if the recoverable amount is less than book value, then you need to do an asset impairment. An asset impairment is where you recognize an impairment expense and you recognize a, a reduction in the value of the asset. You recognize that as an accumulated impairment. Please note that if circumstances change, then it may be possible for an impairment to be reversed. Property plant equipment is often deteriorating in value over time. The benefits are being used. And we refer, so there is also going to be the third aspect of accounting for property plant equipment, and that is how do we recognize the costs? This is addressed back in IS 16, ASB 116. And in the first instance, you'd recognize a cost of an asset as depreciation. And the standard talks about how you determine the depreciable amount, the depreciation period, and the depreciation method. So quite obviously that's one way of recognizing the cost of an asset in the statement of profit or loss. And of course the other way is through impairment. Now there are some limitations with historic cost accounting. And historic cost values might become increasingly irrelevant if values change. And sometimes asset values go up. And so there are some limitations. And historic cost information may not always be relevant. Reflecting this, there is some scope within ASB 116, IS 16, for the revaluation of property, plant, equipment. And this should be applied in circumstances where historic cost loses its relevance. And what we can see here is the standard allows firms to use either the cost model or the revaluation model. The cost model is effectively what we've just described, whereby we recognize assets at cost, minus accumulated depreciation, minus accumulated impairment. Whereas the revaluation model provides for the periodic restatement of assets to fair value. 
So it's a modified historic cost approach. When it comes to revaluation, what effectively happens is that you adjust the accumulated depreciation back against the asset value. You then adjust the asset value to the fair value to the recoverable amount. If there's an increment, the value's gone up. If there's an increment, the gain is recognized in other comprehensive income. If there's a revaluation decrement, it's recognized in the statement of profit or loss. And of course, it is possible for there to be reversals. And reversals are recognized in the same way as the same manner as the original adjustment was recognized. There are significant disclosure requirements for property plant equipment. And of course, these are addressed both in IAS 16 and IAS 36. Paragraph 73 onwards for property plant equipment, 126 onwards for impairment.